Welcome to the Healthy Hair Podcast. Your host, Dr. Amy Brenner, is a board-certified OBGYN with additional certifications in functional and integrative medicine. This podcast is meant to help women find reliable, relevant information to help them feel better, look better, and live better. Here, you will hear in-depth information about hormones, sexual medicine, aesthetics, cosmetic gynecology, and functional medicine. Well, hey, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Healthy Her. I'm just going to tell you now, this is an episode that is going to benefit everybody because we are going to talk about stress, and we have a physician who is has tagged herself as the self-care doctor and helping people deal with stress, and her name is Dr. Robin Tiger. Welcome, Dr. Tiger. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. It's really an honor. I'm a big fan of your podcast. Thank you. Same. So I've spent actually the last couple of days, I think I've listened to all of your podcast. And uh, before we went online, I told you I, I learned a lot, but I also learned about decluttering my space, which I've actually been working on for the past couple months, but I didn't realize I had to go through my spice uh drawer that spices expire. I learned that in your declutter your space uh, podcast, but super helpful tips, but there are lots of other good tips. So, but let's get into it. Um, How did you become um, the stress MD doctor? Or stress, sorry, stress, stress stress stress-free MD. MD. Yeah. Well, I was the stress MD (laughs) (laughs) and then I became the stress-free MD. Um, And that just started, you know, based on my own experience about 15 years ago or so when I became what we know as a complex case in medicine, which means that there were lots of symptoms that I was experiencing that no doctor could figure out. And I'll just share some of them with you because lots of you that are listening may, may be experiencing some or maybe even all of these the kinds of things that were happening to me were things like migraine headaches with vomiting. Um, I had vertigo, which is like when you turn your head and everything was very, very spinny in the room, feeling dizzy. I had tinnitus, which was a loud ringing in my ears. My gums, gums were bleeding just spontaneously, meaning like they would just bleed. I wasn't even eating. Um, I had really bad reflux where I felt like there was pain in my chest. Uh, My body hurt, like everything hurt, particularly my shoulders and my neck and my back, my hips. And I had this really scary symptom of numbness that would happen in my hands and my feet and the left side of my back. I would be cutting up vegetables. I couldn't feel the knife. I would be driving in my car. I couldn't feel the steering wheel in my hands. I would be in a breast biopsy holding the biopsy gun and all of a sudden I just wouldn't be able to feel it. That was terrifying. Right? Yeah. Terrifying because what do we think as doctors? What do we think? Doc- oh, I would have convinced myself I had some kind of a uh, chronic uh, life-threatening neurologic disorder, some kind of cancer. I mean, br- maybe a brain cancer. I definitely would have went there. Oh, yeah, right? So our brain goes to all of those places. And I thought I had all of those things you were talking about and even more. And and I was super stressed and I wasn't sleeping and I couldn't eat. And every time I ate something, my belly would distend and I have pain and bowel habits were all over the place. And I started to have some really dark thoughts. You know, I, I have to share that. You know, first they were just thoughts like, oh, you know, you're Dr. Mom and maybe you can't handle all this. Maybe you weren't meant to do all this and other people are better than you. And and then it just got worse into thinking, like, I don't know if I even want to spend another day like this. Like, I don't even know if I want to be here. Really scary thoughts. And I had every blood test, all negative. I had every imaging test because I'm a radiologist, right? So that was easy. And we saw, everyone saw my insides. <laughs> they were all negative. Nothing came up. And yeah, what kind of specialists did you end up seeing? Oh my gosh, I saw, okay, so my internist, of course, to start. And then I got referred out a gastroenterologist, periodontist, neurologist. I had a psychologist, um, just so many people I was seeing. 
um, and endocrinologist. I mean, people, just, nobody knew what's going on with me. And it was really scary. It was really scary. Every doctor gave me a pill. We call it a pill for an ill, right? And ended up with a big pile of pills and none of them made me feel better. Everyone saw me as a symptom. So what, like antidepressants, uh, reflux medicines? Yeah. Yep. Uh, gabapentin. Maybe some ner- yeah, I was going to say gabapentin, the nerve pill. Uh-huh. I was on antibiotics for my gums and some, I forget what I was on for the tinnitus and the vertigo. I mean, I can't remember all the names of everything I was on, but yeah, yeah, you named some and there were more and it was like a big pile of pills and actually I felt even worse on all those pills. And so, well, because that's what we're taught in medical school. You tell me a problem and I'll write you a prescription. That's right. We're taught to just focus on what the patient comes in with and treat the symptoms. So the doctors were doing their job. I love Western medicine. I still think that practicing medicine is one of the greatest privileges in the world. But what I learned was that in my situation, what we were taught wasn't what I needed because it wasn't working. And the really scary thing is that I had had three physician friends die from suicide. And so I said, oh my gosh, I have this amazing husband. I have these two incredible kids. They were really little at the time and this job. And I look perfect on the outside, but I don't want to end up like my colleagues. And so that is how I went from being a stressed MD <laughs> to researching what else is out there that I could use to help myself because if I didn't do anything, nothing was going to get better. What was your lifestyle like? Were you like, quote, unhealthy, end quote? Like- I was super healthy. I was working out. I'm already a gym rat. I already was running races, always at the gym, eating a plant-based diet. Um, it wasn't my diet. It wasn't my fitness. So those two things were already on board. Um, Certainly this was disrupting my sleep, which I wasn't getting nourishing sleep at all. And I had good friends. I had community. And I wasn't doing drugs outside of what I was given um, by my doctors. So it wasn't that I was taking drugs, drinking. I wasn't doing any of that. None of that was on board. So how long did it take for you to, because I've listened to your podcast and listened to your story in in your own podcast, um, the stress-free MD podcast. And, um, I, I assume you basically eventually said it's, it's lifestyle and stress and anxiety, which led you to this, but how long did it take you to go through this pathway of seeing all these specialists taking all these prescription medications before you realize that? Yeah. So this was going on for a few years. You know, this wasn't like one day I woke up and I had all these things wrong with me you know, the headaches came and then I can't remember what order, but it it was a series of several years where I just started to gather up all of these symptoms. They really accumulated to the point that I had all of them at once. And actually the way it happened wasn't that I realized I had stress. What happened was I started hearing about things like yoga, like meditation, things, coaching, things outside of what we learn in medicine. And even though I did a lot of eye rolling, because <laughs> even some people who are listening might be eye rolling, I know I was eye rolling, so you're not alone. Uh, I decided to t- dabble in a beginner course that was down the road from my home, starting with yoga and meditation and dragging my next door neighbor who's a nurse with me because I didn't want to go alone. And even though she was eye rolling, <laughs> she came with me. And it was after that first session when everything became clear and I felt calm and I was relaxed in my body that I started to recognize what happened because I hadn't felt like that in decades. And I dove into the research. I dove into our, our medical books. I dove into everything I could find. And that's when I realized that what I was experiencing was all related to stress and that the diagnosis that no one made, including myself initially, was that I was suffering from chronic stress. And, it- and did you feel like you were stressed out? I mean, I mean, I can certainly relate working as a, a busy physician and having two little kids. Like, 
it's it can be really stressful. But did you feel like stress was the problem once you kind of had that light bulb moment? Well, I didn't. I know what it's like to feel stressed, but I didn't realize it would cause my hands to go numb or my gums to bleed or me to have reflux, or my body to hurt or, you know, I didn't realize it was going to cause tinnitus and vertigo and all of these things. So I know it's, yeah, we're stressed, but what I did not know was that all the symptoms I was seeking help with from our colleagues was related to that stress and that it wasn't anything I needed a pill for. Does that make sense? Mm hmm. You said you dove into the data because I, I could hear somebody saying like, yeah, how do we know that like those kinds of things can truly help physical things? Like most people can understand like, okay, I get stressed. Maybe I throw up. Maybe I get a little diarrhea when you're stressed. But what did you find when you like dug into the medical literature on some of these techniques? Yeah, great question. So um, particularly our doctor brains, our left brain needs to see real evidence, like objective data, which is measurable evidence, right? Not just that someone says they feel better, but that's subjective, but objective data. And what study after study after study shows is that the chronic stress hormone cortisol decreases when you do things like yoga and things like meditation and somatics and other things that I'm, that I was practicing and I'm now certified in, that cytokines, which in your blood measure inflammation, they decrease, they get lower. So inflammation causes a lot of symptoms and illnesses and diseases. Chronic stress increases inflammation. So they're able to show that inflammation decreases with learning how to basically control your stress response and get those hormone levels down. Um, they show things like um, EMGs where they're evaluating muscle tension, how muscles are functioning, and they can show that muscles are relaxing. They're increasing in length when you do certain movements in a certain way. You know, there's so many, there's so many things that they're measuring. They measure the way that your brain changes. This is totally fascinating to a radiologist that when you meditate, and this is out of Harvard, this is mass general, this is like the Mecca, that you actually thicken what's called the prefrontal cortex of your brain. That's the front portion of your brain responsible for critical thinking and decision making. And you thicken what's called your hippocampus, which is responsible for memory, new memory formation. And you shrink down what's called the amygdala. That's the part of your brain where anxiety lives, where the stress response and negative thoughts hang out. So they actually were able to measure changes by MRI in people's brains who are meditating. And then there's telomeres, which really is mind blowing. So Dr. Brenner, you know that little plastic end of your shoelace? That little thing, it's called an aglet. Actually, I learned it has a name. It's called an aglet. Oh, <laughs> For anybody the out there doing thing has a name? the shoelace, if you're doing Wordle or any of those things, there's actually a word for it. It's called how you, aglet. How do you spell that? A G L E T. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So, crossword puzzle people, Wordle people, or just people who love words. Um, so, a telomere is kind of like an aglet on your chromosome. It's this little protective end of your chromosome. And what it does is that over time, it shortens as we age. That's the normal progression of what happens. And the length of that telomere determines how old you are, how what your longevity is, how, much, how old you should be down at the cellular level. And what they found was that people with chronic stress have premature shortening of their telomeres, which means their telomeres get shorter more quickly than people who aren't stressed. And that means you don't live as long. What they found was that people can actually build that back up. You can actually make that longer again. Many, many studies for the last several decades have shown that you can actually lengthen those telomeres and increase your longevity back to baseline and then some. So that was just unbelievable fascinating to me. And this is all objective data in in our literature. There's also a lot of research on what are what are the other negative effects of chronic stress? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So besides making you feel horrible, (laughs) which is, which is what I just described and, you know, all the things, not sleeping and digestion and losing focus and concentration, body hurts and all the stuff, the things that are, the thing that's really, really scary also is that chronic stress is the direct cause of most of the chronic illnesses in our country and in the world, such as high blood pressure, diabetes, adult onset diabetes, um, heart disease, heart attacks, stroke, cancer progression and growth, and again, premature shortening of these telomeres. So um, it's, it's really imperative that we learn how to take care of ourselves so the best thing we can do for ourselves is to learn how to take care of ourselves by ourselves so that we can prevent a lot of these diseases from happening. And so when, when you say take care, care of yourself as well as uh, um, I see you have certifications in yoga therapy, me- meditation, and life coaching, like what does that really mean taking care of yourself? And, and I don't know if you can answer that in the next five hours or so. But, uh. <laughs> next, uh, next five weeks. Yes. Yes. So, um, stress, keeping your stress level down is, is really important. And that's one of several things that you can do. So I'm also lead faculty and subject matter expert for stress management in, for the American college of lifestyle medicine. Um, actually currently, creating their board review material for certifying physicians for the next version of that exam. And lifestyle medicine uh, focuses on six main pillars of health. And it's been shown to prevent, reverse, and treat disease. And so stress is one component. Stress is one component. And they all kind of talk to each other and work together. But the other components that we need to focus on include fitness, getting enough exercise, nutrition, and being as close to a whole food plant-based diet as you can. I mean, if you can, that's great. If you, as long as you're trying to eat more fruits and vegetables and less processed things, um, having community, having community, making sure that you are around people that support you, um, that care for you, that, that you're not isolated making sure you get nutritious sleep, right? Nourishing sleep. Sleep is so reparative, so important for your overall health. And not over drinking and staying away from self-medicating and drugs. And so these six pillars have been shown in the medical literature to be really, really important in allowing you to be the healthiest version of you. How does somebody know if they're stressed? I mean, certainly like I remember when my kids were little and I had three babies back to back and there were times when it seemed like somebody was always crying. My house was always a mess. I was delivering babies. So I was always tired and, and I would feel that. Like I felt like (gasps) it's just too much. Like I need to like go in another room or just go in the bathroom and like just be in the bathroom for 15 minutes. And that was like, I knew I was stressed. Like I felt it. But what you described of you know, your hands being numb or bleeding gums. Like how do, how does somebody know other than when it's really obvious, like what I described, how does somebody know if stress is what's causing their issues versus, versus other things? Yeah. Well, what you described all that, that's definitely stressed. <laughs> so I had that and all the symptoms. Um, what I would say is, yeah, I mean, if you, are able to go to your doctor and your doctor says to you, hey, what's going on in your world? (laughs) You know, over 80% of the symptoms that patients report to their doctors with are related to stress. Most things that we report to our doctors about aren't things that we need medications and procedures for. That's in the medical literature. (laughs) It was 70% and now it's 80%. And they said that's because there's been an increase in global stress, really, and maybe related to the pandemic. I don't know. But um, certainly if you have one isolated thing going on and your life feels really good, well, that needs to be evaluated. But if you don't, if you are feeling stressed and you've got some symptoms on board, I think that should be a red flag for any physician to say, hmm, Let's see what's going on with you. Is there any way we can 
decrease the stress? Is there any way we can help you feel better first without taking a pill? And if this doesn't work, then we have plan B and we can give you a pill for that. What can people expect if they work with somebody like yourself that's a self-care doctor? Because I assume it's more than just, okay, I'm going to sign up for the yoga classes at my gym. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, so there's a difference also between yoga teacher and yoga therapist. Um, yoga teacher is a base level of 200 hours of training, and it can be done like within a month in some places. In some places, maybe you spread it out on weekends for over eight or nine months. And in, with the yoga class taught by yoga teacher, and yoga teachers are amazing, nothing against yoga teachers, just to explain the difference, you conform to what the teacher's doing. So no matter what's going on in your world, you just do whatever that person is teaching you in that class. Yoga therapy requires at least 1,000 hours of training over a three-year period. And what it does after you get your te yoga teacher certification is that it teaches you how to use the concepts that you would learn in yoga and in meditation and help apply it to individuals who are experiencing certain symptoms and illnesses and diseases. So you are conforming to the client or the group of clients in front of you. So it's very, very different. Um, so when someone works with me, that's just a piece of what I do. Um, as you mentioned, I'm certified in meditation and life coaching. And I look at the whole person and I really get to know what someone's experiencing and what their goals are. And I work from what I like to call a bottom up and a top down approach. So you know when your mind is going kooky, it's really hard to work with your thoughts. Your mind's every which way and most likely your body is what we call dysregulated, your stress response. The stressful part of your nervous system is on overdrive. So we need to first work from the bottom up, the body, to create that calm in the body, to bring everything back into balance. And then we can work with the thoughts through life coaching. So I really take all of these disciplines and create one package of tools that work from both this bottom up and this top down approach to help people become the happiest and healthiest. So when you say bottom up and that means taking care of your body, like eating right and exercising? Yes. Yeah, so, so with stress relief tools, those are body based tools. Um, so just with the stress piece, we work with the body-based tools, whether it be breath or movement or meditation or a bunch of other disciplines I work with. And then we work from the top-down mindset work with life coaching. And then if the individual or group is interested in nutrition, you know, we talk about nutrition and fitness and, you know, all the things that we mentioned earlier. So it really depends on what that individual is looking for, what pieces I can help add to their life transform, change in their life, what they're not already doing, and really just conform to that person and what they need. What do you say to the person who says, this all sounds great, but I'm already too stressed. I don't have time for that. Like I have three kids. I work full time. I have an hour commute both days. Like I don't have time for yoga. I don't have time for this. Yeah, I get that all the time. I, I work with the busiest of people that are corporate or C-suite, you know, the, the medical executives. I work with super, super busy people that are lucky if they can even go to the bathroom during the day, you know. Um, so the beauty is that I've taken all of this, these concepts that I've learned, and I've deconstructed them into what I like to think of as little snacks of education. And whether it be me teaching live or whether it be my creating, you know, video um, series, I have all different types of video series. It really is tailored to whatever amount of time you have. So like I have one um, client out in the West Coast who seriously said, I have five minutes. And I said, okay, I got five minutes. This is what I want you to do. You know, so if you have five minutes, if you have 15 minutes, if you have one minute, you know, 30 seconds, if you have an hour, whatever it is, we can put into that time period what you can do to help yourself. The other thing is lots of the things that I teach become lifestyle. So you can do them while you're doing other things, while you're driving in your car, 
folding your laundry, emptying your dishwasher, walking your dog, waiting in your car for your kids, seeing a patient, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you're doing these other things at the same time because you're constantly bringing yourself back to this calmer state. You're constantly coming back to balance. So there's no such thing as there's no time (laughs) because you can be doing things while you're doing other things all the time. And you got it. You got less than a minute. That's fine. Yeah, I love your uh, that you called it. What do you call it? A snack? Snacks of information. Snacks. snacks yeah, of they're just little snacks. I love Stress that. free snacks or snacks of information. Um, because my whole thing is I want to make everything accessible to the busiest of people. They're the ones that actually need it the most. <laughs> so, yeah. so if you have an hour, wonderful. But you know, throughout your day, I want you to feel better all day long. And I want you to constantly come home to that feeling of calm, grounded, clarity, focus. And you have a lot of these little free little snacks that you just make available to the general public on your website or and even on your podcast. Yeah, yeah. I have um, four videos on my website that are each five minutes long or I should say five minutes short (laughs) because I know how busy people are. So there are four different types of uh, stress relief tools and mindset tools on the website that you can have for free. And then my podcast is intentionally in general, 15 minutes or less to accommodate really busy schedules. I don't want you to be pausing and pausing and having to, you know, spend three weeks getting through a long episode. So I really try and break it into snacks of yeah. information. I love that. I, you know, I say that to people about exercise too, is exercise doesn't need to be this, you know, I go home, get my stuff, go to the gym, put my stuff in a locker. Like it could be four minutes of 40 seconds of burpees and 20 seconds of rest for four minutes. Um, I mean, I've done that on days when I'm operating and in, be- you know, in between cases of, I don't have time because I got to operate all day. And then I have a kids volleyball game at night and I'm not going to get home until nine o'clock at night. So yeah, totally. And I love that you're doing that. You're, you're seeing, you know, we have 24 hours and I like to think of it as a puzzle and like, what are all the pieces and where are you putting them in? And, you know, I'm just imagining you doing like push-ups in the OR, like in between cases or something. Oh yeah. I've gotten over to what people think of me. I've done it at the airport too, brought bands and my kids are mortified. And I said, how come you're going to look, look down at me being over here with my bands that I brought, but we're not going to look down at somebody that's, you know, eating a, um, those Cinnabons like. (laughs) No, well, you know, it's, it's so good that you're setting that example. And, um, you know, I, I mean, the proof's in the pudding. And uh, we talked about telomeres earlier. And I have to share with you that I wanted to know how old I was on the inside compared to the outside. So the cellular age, remember we talked about the little protective ends of your chromosomes. I wanted to know how long mine were. Yeah, what did you get? So yeah, so what I got was actually I was afraid to open it, but I was grateful that I did. I sent my blood test away and I was, at that point, I was 52 years old. I'm 56 now. And um, it came back that I was 36 years old. So I'm 16 years younger at the cellular level. So this stuff works, people. (laughs) This stuff works. And I had some really stressed out friends that were like, I want to see what mine is. And they sent their tests away and they came back older than their chronologic age, which means their cellular age is older than how old they think they've how old they've been on this earth. They had some work to do. So it would be interesting if you would have done it when you were having all those health issues. Yes, I didn't know about it way back then, but I mean, I could hypothesize that it was definitely not 16 years younger, but um I know that um I was the way the people that were stressed out were and I am sure that um, 16 years old is a lot. <laughs> that's, a lot. that's a big difference. Um, and, and so my, my kids, they think it's cool. They go around telling everybody, you know, <laughs>
That's awesome. I did a test similar to that too. I don't think I was 16 years. I think it was more like 12 years. I think I was 40 when I was 50, but that's awesome. Um, yeah. But it is it, the I think the point is is it's never too late and you can reverse um I use a company called True Age. Is it tells you what your your um eight your current age is and then what your what your true age is based on a lot of genetic markers, um, which I think is just so interesting. And and then basically a lot of things you can do to reverse your your aging. The other the other thing as I think that's interesting is probably the people that are doing that test though are probably people that are tend to be very healthy. So I wonder if actually it's even better than what the test shows. I just wonder. I don't Mm, well, they, apparently they just did a, you know, they do a general population a measurement and you're measured against them. I don't think that they subselected for super healthy people. So I, don't. <laughs> I, I heard you in one of your podcasts say that you're a gym rat. And what would you say to the person of like, yeah, but I don't really like that meditation, yoga, slow down. I'd rather put my running shoes on and go for a run or lift weights or go to a cycling class with blaring music. And the, I, I actually like that. Is there still a place for yoga and meditation if somebody prefers that? Well, you'll see me at the gym doing that every day. <laughs> <laughs> so I am still doing all of that. And that is really good physically. We need fitness. We need to keep our body strong in that way. But that does not get your cortisol levels down, the chronic stress hormone. That does not do that. That, you know, we're, we need actually to balance it out. And you don't have to do, quote, yoga, like I said, don't take an hour class. Maybe meditation for you is, you know, while you're driving in your car, just drawing your attention to your senses. Maybe drawing your attention to what it feels like to eat and to taste your food without just, you know, finishing it all really quickly. Maybe meditation for you is taking a walk and just being aware of what's around you. There are so many ways to meditate. It doesn't have to be something really structured. And with the yoga, like I said, for me, I have spent over a decade deconstructing concepts to very small digestible bites of information. So maybe you are just using one of the tools that I, that I teach you in one of those five minute videos, you know, while you're doing something else throughout your day, while you're like I said before, folding your laundry or emptying the dishwasher or seeing a patient, you know, white when you're in the OR, <laughs> you know, whatever it is you're doing. So we need the balance. I did not have the balance. I'm a perfect example of somebody who was imbalanced in what I was doing with respect to caring for myself. So we need all those pieces to be the healthiest versions of ourselves. Where should somebody start if they're like this, you know, this all makes sense. This is resonating to me. I, I haven't gotten answers to my problems. Where should they, where should they start? Well, if someone wants to learn some quick tools, that's why I made the videos because I got so many questions from people, even my podcast listeners. Can we see what you're talking about? So that's why I made four short videos. There's a calming breathing tool. There's a short series to release tension from your neck and shoulders. Um, there's a guided meditation and a mindset shift. So you can almost like a little, little set of appetizers. <laughs> you can go in and, and test them out and see how you feel, um, see what, what you like. And I would start there. Um, it doesn't cost anything and they're really short and really easy to follow. That's awesome. Where can everybody find you? I know I mentioned some of the places, but just to round it out and put it all in one place. So where can people find you and find more information? Yes. Yeah, so my website is www.stressfreemd.net. And you'll find the videos on the homepage where it says feel calm now. You'll also um, find my podcast on every platform, major platform, or you can listen to it right from the website. The podcast has the same name. It's the Stress-Free MD Podcast. And I'm all over social media. So if you're an Instagram person, a LinkedIn person, Facebook, uh, Twitter, you can find me all over uh, social media and reach out to me there. 
or I have a free call if you're interested in discussing more personally about what's going on with you and how I could help you. You can do that through my website. Thank you so much, Dr. Tiger. I think this was so helpful. And I think, uh, do you think medicine is going to start changing in this direction instead of here's a problem, here's a pill? Because I really believe in this kind of medicine and it can help so many people turn their lives around. I hope so. I hope so, Dr. Brenner. You know, the American College of Lifestyle Medicine is working hard to get this education out there. It's all in the medical literature. We know how important all this is to not work from a disease management system where we're just managing people's diseases, but to really bring the health back into healthcare and to help prevent and reverse disease. So I hope so. <laughs> it's going to take some time, but it would yeah. be amazing. Because in the long run, this is just going to be so much better for your overall health and actually so much less expensive for your overall health and keeping you out of the doctor's office instead of in the doctor's office by employing these strategies. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. It's my honor. Thank you for listening to this episode of Healthy Her. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and the web. Go to www.dramybrenner.com to learn more. This podcast is for general information only and does not constitute as medical advice, the practice of medicine, nursing or other healthcare services. No patient-physician relationship is formed. The information in the podcast and any references, material or links are at the sole discretion of the listener and not meant to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis or treatment. Listeners should not delay or disregard obtaining medical advice for any medical issues or diagnoses that they may have and should seek medical advice from their healthcare provider for any such conditions.